I think one of the best things about getting older is we have the time to look back and remember all the lessons we've learned. Not everything that glitters is gold. I think starting over is a state of mind. I watched my mother pack up and move us 14 times before I was six years old. I remember my mom walking into the bathroom of her brand new apartment, turning on the faucet, and dirt came out. I watched her cry and cry. She had nothing. Every time I make a room pretty, I do it for my mom. And I do it for every woman out there that's starting over and who has nothing but a dream of a better life. Everybody, I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I so hope you had a good, safe, happy week. And today I am tackling something that I get asked about every single day, either in a private message, an email, or a comment under one of my videos. You ask me two things. How do I stay positive in my thinking? And how did I recover after my husband left me, after I got a divorce? What was my thinking process? How did I become strong again? So I got to answer this. And I have made a couple videos about how I started over. This one is going to be more the thinking process behind what it's like when all is lost or you feel all is lost. And recovering seems so far away, so monumental. And there were so many things I had to change about my life and my thinking. And well, I want to answer. I want to answer these questions that you have about how do you start over after 60? How do you start over at any age? I think so many of these things that I'm going to talk about today apply. No matter what your age, when your life blows up, you need some pretty major touchstones in your life. You've got to rebuild your life brick by brick. And you need a goal, not 10 goals, not 20 goals. How about just one goal, maybe two goals? And write it down in nice big letters and slap it on your refrigerator or your dresser or mirror just so every day it will ground you. It's like, you know, driving a beautiful car, right? You're all dressed up, you're in your car, you're driving, and it's a beautiful day. But you have no destination. You don't know where you're going, but you just keep driving, right? That gets pretty scary. You end up getting lost. I, I felt confused. I, I couldn't organize my thoughts. So every morning I would get up and I would look on the refrigerator and there was my goal. And my goal was to not cry. I know. It sounds silly, but that was my goal. That I could get through the day without crying. And once I did that, my next goal was to get a job. And I did that too.
11 years ago this month, I looked out the window of my home and I saw movers and my husband had hired movers and he was moving out all his belongings from our home. And I ran to him hysterical and I said, what does this mean? Does this mean you don't live here anymore? And he teared up, he put his head down and he said, that's right, I don't live here anymore. And from that moment on, I knew. I knew my life would change forever. Things would never be the same. When you are going through one of the most traumatic times in your life, and somebody turns to you and says, think positive thoughts, you wanna throw something, don't you? I know I did. But I had to do what I called, it could have been worse. And that's just another phrase for just being grateful for what you do have. So I would look back and I would say, oh, poor me. Oh my, I can't believe I'm going through this divorce. I can't believe I'm losing this man I love so much. But it could have been worse. Maybe I never would have loved anybody at all. Maybe I never would have known that joy of what it's like to wake up every morning with a man that you are crazy about. I had 20 years with that man. So yeah, it could have been worse. I could have had zero years with nobody. Or my car accident. Well, it could have been worse. Man, that was a nasty car accident. The guy, it was a head-on collision. Could have been worse. I could have died. And that's what I started to do. I forced myself to do that every day. Every time I would start thinking of something negative, I would think, mm-hmm, could have been worse. And after a while, I just naturally do it. I just naturally do that now. Once you start that negative thinking, it is really hard to get out of it. But once you start that positive thinking, it's hard to get out of that too. Being grateful for what you have. Have you ever gone to dinner maybe with another couple or just been sitting around and there's, there's like one person there that is, everything is negative, right? Everything out of his mouth or everything out of her mouth is negative. Oh, that waiter is horrible. Oh, this food is just dreadful. Why did we even come here? I mean, they just ruin the whole evening for you, right? Do you... Do you want to be around that person? And I would think that too. I would think, I do not want to be that person that is so miserable with their own life that they only can feel complete by making somebody else miserable. Oh no, that wasn't for me. I had to... I had to take the path of thinking in a positive way, no matter how horrible I felt. And I did feel horrible. I was afraid of being afraid. <laughs> and then I realized pretty early on that fear could be my friend. Fear could keep me from doing a lot of things that maybe I would have turned to when I was at my very lowest point. Something to soothe my ravaged heart. Like drinking too much, alcohol, drugs, gambling. I mean, you name it. All of those things I feared. I had a deep fear of anything that would take me away from my life, myself, something that I couldn't control. Those were all things that I feared and that, that was a good fear. And once I realized that, that not all fear is bad, I stopped being afraid to be afraid. You know, you ask yourself after a divorce, am I gonna be okay? Am I gonna make it? And the answer is yes. You're not only gonna make it, you're gonna be better than you were before. Starting over isn't easy, but anything that you feel you may have lost, you'll get it back. And if you can't get it back, you'll recreate it in a different way. Desi 
to do a little extra video in the middle of the week, like one or two minutes, like Desi's moment of zen. Would you like that? Desi wants to do that, but I don't know. What do you think? I don't dare cross him. He'll slap me. Everybody's slapping everybody lately. What's up with that? Stop slapping people. I don't care how old you are. When your life blows up, you need comedy. You need to laugh. And it's hard. When you feel miserable and sad and you're trying to rebuild your life, it's very hard to, you know, stop for the comedy, right? But that's just what I had to do. About a, a year and a half ago, I went through kind of an anxious time. It was, I don't know what was going on, maybe the stress of moving. But for six weeks, I just felt very anxious. And definitely 10 years ago, I was feeling mighty anxious when I was first healing up from my divorce. But what I would do is every night I would put on some silly comedy movie. Uh, one of my favorites was a movies from my childhood, like Doris Day, Rock Hudson, the silliest, dumbest movies. I mean, you're not gonna use one brain cell trying to figure out what this movie is trying to tell you. But it was fun. And it was an escape. And I loved Sleepless in Seattle. I watched that 1,487 times. Uh, Hope Floats. There were so many movies that made me laugh. The Blues Brothers. And it's so hard to feel bad when you're laughing. So that is something I've always tried to incorporate in my life, especially when things are going wrong. You just gotta, you gotta laugh. Be goofy, be silly, but just laugh and make others laugh. It's amazing how good that feels. And that kind of gets the endorphins going, right? And you even start to look a little bit better. The more you laugh, the better you look. Okay, I just made that up, but <laughs> could be true. had to ask myself what am I good at and and then how, how do I make money at something that I'm good at I wasn't good at that many things I loved gardening and I loved playing the piano but I didn't have the confidence to go out and play piano and and make a living at it like I had before well so I went to Home Depot and I got a job in the garden department and I didn't make much money. I still want to tell you about that job and how I got fired from that job almost like 1,400 times. Do you want to hear that story? But I was saving 20 bucks a week. And that was everything to me. And I would design these little spreadsheets in, you know, Microsoft Excel and what if I save $20 a week for the next 20 years? How much money will I have in 20 years? And it came out to like $50,000. How about if I double that? How about if I can start saving $40 a week? My goodness, in 20 years, I'm going to have $100,000. And I used to play with my money. I used to play with money that I didn't have, but money that maybe I could get my hands on if I just saved. And that helped me to quit smoking. All the money that I was wasting with cigarettes, that helped me. And that was one more positive step to a better life that I so desperately wanted to build for myself. So yeah, I would fantasize about having, having money, saving money, and what that money could do for my grandchildren, what that money could do, well, in case maybe someday I could ever get a house again. And my dreams came true with, a, with some prayers and and some hard work and finding something that I absolutely loved to do and then making a little, a little bit of money doing it, my dreams did come true.
hope you love these earrings. These earrings are so pretty. They're like little suns. There is a woman on YouTube who has a channel. Her name is Wendy, and I will link her channel below. But she does these beautiful designs for earrings for quite a few of us here on YouTube. And she does sell them to the public. So I wanted to make sure I told you that because... She is so beautiful and kind and lovely. She's in New Jersey and she has the cutest little accent. So. No matter what our age, we all have needs and, and wants. And a lot of times, especially the older we get, the less likely we are to ask for what we need. We don't want to intrude. We don't want to be a burden. We are rebuilding our life. So we don't, we just don't want to intrude on our, our friends, our family, maybe our coworkers. So we're just going to stay silent, right? We're just going to suffer in complete silence because, well, that's just the way it is, right? If we need a kind word or a hug or a visit from our family, ask for it. If, if our birthday is coming up next week and we have a, a special friend and he always forgets when your birthday is, call him up and remind him. I mean, be proactive. If you need love, ask for it. If you need a friend, make a new friend or call an old friend. That friend can be just somebody that you meet on the internet that maybe isn't physically in your life, but somebody who's in your corner. But don't be afraid to ask for what you need. If you have a close friend, and maybe you're kind of drifting apart, talk about it. Ask for a closer relationship. Ask for some type of clarification of maybe something that you're disagreeing on. But just ask for it. People are never offended when they find out how you truly feel and maybe what you might need. So, so don't, don't be afraid to ask for what you need. If you need love, seek it out. Don't forget to light the candles. Chase the shadows with those bright lights. Can you hear your favorite YouTube channel? Let the children play with gifts and dreidels Share these moments with my loved ones I can see It's funny, I have this Bruce Springsteen song in my head and I can't get it out of my head. Remember that song, uh, Born to Run? Do you remember where you were when you first heard that song? Oh gosh, what was the lyrics? and walk in the sun but until then tramps like us baby we were born to run baby we were born to run Seven years ago this month, I started my YouTube channel. And I have been trying to film an anniversary video for you and I want to make it really cool and great. And I've been struggling with it. I got to tell you the truth. I have really been struggling on bringing this to you. And some of my struggle is that, well, I've changed so much. The videos that I was doing in 2015 are nothing like the videos that I do now. I have such a wonderful time talking to you about anything, about just life in general. But back then, I would start out my video crying. I, and I, I would just talk about things that I didn't really care about just to talk. The very first collab I ever did on YouTube was with a woman named Cheryl Free Range Diva, and I will link her channel below. But we did a collab in the winter of 2016. 
And she and I, we had a little Zoom meeting last month and we were talking about this collab that we want to do this summer because we want to talk about where women are right now. The things that we're struggling with, the things that are working for us, the things that are not working for us. Just, but we were talking about how we have evolved, how we have changed. And that's the whole key, I think, to life in general. We keep moving forward. We keep learning, we keep changing. And change can be so scary. But change is one of the most important things we will ever do in our life that will create happiness for us. I am going to do that anniversary video and there's going to be a giveaway and it's going to be so fun. And I'm going to go back to Pop's Restaurant and John Ball Park Zoo and where I used to live in that pretty blue gazebo. And I want to do that video for you. But I, I want the sun to be shining, so I probably am going to do my anniversary video in May. Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I loved every second of it. And if you get a chance down below, could you share something that maybe helped you when you were going through a tough time? Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here. Don't forget to light the candle. You are a woman who is going through a divorce. You know the very second that you look in that mirror and you realize that man is not coming back. And your life is your own now to run. Share these moments with my loved ones I can see the light reflecting in their eyes Welcome to the first of night Celebrate a miracle Ooh. This is how I feel inside it's light that I do it for every woman who's starting over with nothing but a dream of a better life. To say